Except the Father, and no one knows the Father except the Son, and those to whom the Son chooses to reveal Him. Matthew chapter 11, verse 27. Highly esteemed listeners, welcome to the Oracles of God radio broadcast, a biblical program that is run and sponsored by the Churches of Christ, which come away every Wednesday on Radio Universe 105.7 FM. Now we go to God in prayer. Holy, 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 everlasting God Almighty, creator of the entire universe, your children are grateful unto you this morning for protecting them and granting us this life. We praise your holy name and magnify your greatness for your love and your mercy toward us. We cannot describe them. Thank you once again for this opportunity you are calling us. And as we come before you, we ask for forgiveness of sins in all forms, in thought, in actions, and in deeds, that continually you shall cleanse us with the precious blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. O oh Lord, continue to speak through us and grant us hearts of understanding that your word that may be, will be able to build us up in this world and that to come that completes its work. Thank you so much also for the life of the Staff Radio Universe as you control to guide them transmitting this to your oracle success with your audience. Begin and end successfully with us. In the name above all names, Jesus Christ our Lord, do we pray with thanksgiving. Amen. The Stemless listeners, we continue with a series of lessons we drawn from the theme the way to God is through God himself. The way to the Creator is through the Creator himself. With the topic, the Son of God is also God the Son. And for some weeks now, we've come to a subtopic that let the Bible speak about the attack on Jesus as God the Son. Let the Bible speak about the attack on Jesus as God the Son. The same Christmas. Last week, we continue to discuss from scriptures areas that both God the Father and the Son are mentioned and worshipped together. So we read at um, Revelation chapter 5, verse 11 to 17, where both the God the Father and the Son, in that passage where the Son was seen as the Lamb of God, were worshipped together by every creature. We also discovered last week that in Hebrews chapter 1, verse 5 through 14, Hebrews chapter 1, verse 5 through 14, God the Father calls the Son, God. And God the Son also calls the Father, God. And the only conclusion we could draw from that fact is that the very reason why the Father called the Son God is the same reason why the Son also calls the Father God. And the reason is that they are both God. Hallelujah. The same Christmas. In this Hebrew passage we read also, the Holy Spirit drew a clear distinction 
between angels and the firm. That while angels are creatures of God, the Son is eternal God by using clear and easily understandable logic as we learned last week. And so the distinction was drawn clear by God himself in the book of Hebrews that the Son, Jesus, is not an angel. And this is so clear. And so when we see people teaching that Jesus is an angel, and even giving him name in the Michael Archangel, is blasphemous and is not scriptural. The sinlessness. We use this series of logic that the Bible gave in the scriptures, in the book of Hebrew, to substantiate that fact. And the first logic will be found as we read in Hebrews chapter 1, verses 5 and 9, where it is stated that Jesus is not an angel and is higher than angel because of that passage. In verse 5 and 9, we did say last week, and it is from the scriptures, that God has never said to any angel before, you are my son. This day have I begotten you. And again, I will be to you a father, and you shall be to me a son. And again, sit on my right hand until I make your enemies your fools too. The same business. The Bible said in Hebrews chapter 1, 5 and 9, that God has never, never said this to any angel before. So if Jesus were to be angel, then this passage is wrong. But since God cannot lie, and he says that he has never said this to any angel before, then he has said this to the son. Therefore, the son is not an angel. The same way says, God said to Jesus, you are my son. Today have I begotten you. And again, I will be to you a father. And you shall be to me a son. Sit on my right hand until I make your enemies your full stool. Clear logical proof. Jesus is not an angel. This thing is business. This is what God himself is saying in his inspired word in the book of Hebrews chapter 1, verses 5 and 9. Again, we learn that angels are not worshipped, nor do they accept worship. Angels are not worshipped, nor do they accept worship. But the thing is business in Hebrews chapter 1, verse 6, we learned last week, God commanded in verse 6, and I quote, And let all the angels of God worship him. And this was a command of God the Father about God the Son when he was bringing him to the world and commanding all his angels to do this to him. And let all the angels of God worship him. Before then, the distinguished listeners, we had read, Revelation chapter 19, verse 10, and Revelation chapter 22, verse 8 to 9. Revelation chapter 19, verse 10, and Revelation 22, 8 to 9, where we had read, where John attempted to bow down to the angel who revealed the book of Revelation to him twice. But the angel vehemently opposed that and prevented John from worshiping him. You may say, by even a human being, you can show respect to somebody and bow down. You will tell the Nagina to lie down flat. Please, that is not what is being explained here. What is being taught here about is religious bowing down. It is not a cultural something that, oh, well, when you bow down, you show respect and do over. That is not what is there. So we to say that even human beings do that. They don't do that in terms of religion. They don't do that. In our, in our local parlance, or in our, as human beings, we call the, somebody father, mother. It's accepted. But Jesus said, in religion, no one is father. Do you understand the same consciousness? So we are talking about spiritual religious matters, that no one accepts worship or give worship to any creature in terms of religion. It's not talking about a culture bowing down. That's not the issue here. And so the relationship of the 19 verse 10, and we read chapter 22, verse 8 to 9, where John attempted in religion to bow down to the angel who revealed the book of Revelation to him twice, but the angel vehemently opposed that and prevented John from worshiping him. The same In fact, 
the angel of God, who revealed the book of Revelation to John, made an emphatic and axiomatic statement. We call it axiomatic in that it is true without proof. It is clear. It makes reason. It is only the creator that is uh, to be worshipped. Are you a creator? And if you are not a creator, then you can't be worshipped and are still worshipped. That is what the angel told him because he said, he, he made it clear. He said, worship God. He told John, worship God twice. Don't do this to me. I am just a messenger. Worship God. So this is a geomatic truth statement. Belfast, meaning it is only God that deserves to be worshipped. He is the only recipient of worship. It is wrong for any creature to accept or give worship to any creature. Distinguished listeners, we all have learned that God the Father commanded all the angels of God to worship the Son in Hebrews chapter 1, verse 6. In fact, even if we reduce the actual word the Bible used, that instead of worship, we use, it, uh, we use to do obeisance, as we read from the New World Translation, that instead of worship, they have changed it to, to do obeisance, sort of reducing the term worship that is not worship, the same listeners. Even that, the angel forbade John to do that, because John just wanted to show respect and appreciation to the angel who gave him the revelation, but the angel said, no, it is time to man to worship, and should not be done. So even if the new world translation uses do obeisance, it's what God the Father asked all his angels to give to Jesus, is the same. The angel said, no, it can't be done to any creature. Substantiating the fact that Jesus, the Son of God, is God the Son. He is God. And therefore, the Father commanded that all to worship Him. The same Christmas. We also learned last week that in verse 7 of Hebrews chapter 1, that angels were made or were created. Clearly stated. Angels were made or created clearly. And we did read. In verse 7, he said, and of the angels, he says, who makes his angel, who makes his angel spirit and his ministers a flame of fire? Are they not all ministering spirits sent forth to minister for them who shall be heirs of salvation? So this passage defines where angels came from, that they were made out of fire, were made spirits, and their main job description are supposed to be serving Human beings serving them, serving ministry, ministering spirits. And this is what the Bible has described about angels. But listen to what he said about the Son in verses 7 to 9. The verses 7 to 9 of Hebrews chapter 1. The Son Jesus is God, emphatically stated. Because when we read that, he said, But unto the Son, he says, Your throne, O God, is forever and ever. A scepter of righteousness is the scepter of your kingdom. The selflessness. God never said he created the sun. No. It is nowhere in the scriptures. This is an area that God will have come out clearly to define the origin of the sun. But when he defined the origin of angels, listen to what, how he defined the sun. He said, oh God, you're through. Hallelujah. And so nowhere as God the Father said that he created the Son. And we should be careful not to say what God the Father has not said. And it is nowhere in scriptures at all. It is man-made fabrication to, to destroy the plan of God, the scheme of redemption in a subtle way that he has given to us through himself. The sinlessness. The Father, we even ask, tell us in verse 10 to 12, is the Son created, was He created, was He made like the angels? The answer is no. The Son is God, is eternal, is the creator, and will be the judge. He doesn't change. Because when we read from the 7 to 10, listen to what the Bible said. He said, and thou, Lord, that is the Father speaking to the Son, and thou, Lord, in the beginning has laid the foundation of the earth, and the heavens are the works of your hands. They shall perish, but you remain, and they all shall wash old as that a garment. And as a vesture shall you fold them up, 
and they shall be changed. But you are the same, and your years shall not fail. Hallelujah. The same is Christmas. Is it not the same as the Hebrew 38? Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Now the Father also has confirmed here, and so the Son is eternal. He is God. It is only God who is eternal. The Bible didn't say that he had a beginning and became eternal. It is nowhere in the scriptures. These are all fabrications of man, creating God in their own way. There is nowhere in the Bible that says that God the Son, God the Son, or Jesus, or the Son of God, had a beginning. He was created. Then after that, he was made eternal. What tautology confusing statement is that? It is either you are eternal or you are not. Once you have a beginning and you were created, you, are, you don't have eternity. If you live forever, you don't have eternity. You are not eternal. And by the word eternal has been used for Jesus often and often. And in this passage, the Father also said that. And there is nowhere that the Bible has ever said Jesus was created after that he was given eternity. It's nowhere. The same with listeners. We also alerted listeners that a new word translation has changed the word worship to do obeisance. And also when the Father called the Son, your throne, O oh God, is forever, the new word translation refusing to admit this plain fact has changed it to God is your throne. And we said that this doesn't change anything because we have read over and over again where both the Father and the Son are worshipped together. And even the content of Hebrews 1, 5 to 14, even in the New World Translation, project Jesus as God the Son. Hallelujah. The same business. Let us add a little today. Continue on this same line of thought, where both the Son and the Father are mentioned in one breath as God in the Bible. And the next passage, therefore, we talk about is John chapter 1, verse 1. John 1, 1. The same with listeners. Let's listen to the word of God from King James Version. John chapter 1, verse 1. This also, as we are coming, you trace the argument. You trace the discussion. Or any place we are right now, both the Father and the Son are mentioned as God and are working together. Hebrews 5, we've looked at that. We have looked at that where both of them are worshipped. We looked at... Um, Revelation chapter 5, verse 11, to also that, the same thing. We are looking at another place, to God, like it just appears for a human God, God, too, as you mentioned again. And that is John chapter 1, verse 1. That in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were created by Him. And without him was not anything made that was made. That is John 1, verse 1, 2, 3. John 1, 1 to 3. Listen to the New International Version. That is King James Version. The New International Version also says, and I read, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was with God in the beginning. Through him all things were made. Without him... Nothing was made that has been made. That is an ivy. The same business. Listen to the New World Translation. New World Translation. Of John chapter 1, verse 1 to 3. In the beginning was the Word. And the Word was with God. And the Word was a, a God with small g. A God with small g. This one was in the beginning with God. All things came into existence through him. And apart from him, not even one thing came into existence. The statement Of all the hundreds of Bible translations with Greek, Greek philosophers and scholars that have studied Greek and translated the Greek word Theos, Theos as God. Because that same term that has been used in that passage, the new word translated with no academic reason support translates the word a, a small god, a god with small g. Meanwhile, there was no article eh, before the word. Fuels, making the noun a definite noun. The same business. Even in the Greek language, 
whether with article or no article, a noun can be definite and the context justifies it. And so it is very surprising that this sensation will be made. The stigmatismus. This sensation is false for many reasons of which we can discuss very few today. The translation that has been read from the New World Translation is totally false. And it is not the right translation from the Greek. And it is false for many reasons of which we can discuss very few today. One, we just read Hebrews chapter 1, verse 5 to 14, where the Son is called God, but not small God. A fact the New World Translation even recognizes and had to change the sentence, therefore to be God is your throne. Meaning the word God there was the actual God. And so after all, they can change it. But at least, when this God, Jesus is being referred to as God, then why should he be a small God in John 1, 1? Again, the context of John 1, 1 to 3 is similar to Colossians 1, 15 to 17 we've already discussed. Where it is stated, all things came into existence through him. And apart from him, not even one thing came into existence implies that he, Jesus, the Word, might have created himself through himself to make all things, all things indeed. Thank God that the New World Translation has not inserted all other things here yet. In John chapter 1, verse 1 to 3. And we pray they don't. Because if they do, they will be exposed by the very Word of God. Just as they've done in Colossians 1, 15 to 17, and they've been exposed even by the context. So here, all things means all things. All is all. And this is in terms of creator. In John 1, 1 to 3, the Bible didn't say, even in the New World Translation, that all other things. No, he made all things through him. If God wanted the phrase through him, if God wanted to say that Jesus was created, then he would have revealed that apart from himself, Apart from himself, he made all things therefore through him. God never hides anything. He speaks out clearly to us things we should know. And things we don't even expect him to have said it the way he said it, he reveals it. Why wouldn't he reveal? If, if he wants to discuss the way he described the origin of angels, why would he have done to the sun? The same with listeners. Just that he is God. He is not a creature. Again, it is false. Translation because if they claim that because it is through him, it means somebody did it through him, that is unfortunate. Because the phrase through him, by him, for him, is also used for God the Father in so many passages in the Bible. Through him, by him, and for him. And if I want to even cite just one of them, Romans chapter 11, verse 35 to 36. Romans 11, 35 to 36, it reads, Who has ever given to God? that God should repay them. For of him, and through him, and for him, are all things. This is about God the Father, the, the second specialist. God the Father, through everything came to the world through him. And so when we say that, it means it's an agent, and therefore a, a, a smaller God, and somebody went through him. Is that the meaning? Not at all. That's not the meaning. And this is the same uh, uh, term that will be given to the Son, through him, and for him, and by him. And so Romans 11, 35, 36, he said that for of him and through him and for him are all things. Just as Colossians said about the Son. For him, through him, and for everything is the same thing. And so we don't make any doctrine, dogmatic false doctrine around this. That John 1 said through him and self is an agent and he is lesser and that that is not me. Then you ought to say that God the Father is also lesser. And who is the greater? The same listeners. And even when you look at New World Translation also the same, who has given to him so that he must be repaid to him, because from him and by him and for him are all things. To him be the glory forever. If you read Galatians 1, 1, the same thing is there. Hebrews 2, 10, the same through him and for him and by him to the Father and to the Son. Sometimes both of them in one breath, in the same passage, the same listeners. Is it not the same thing that has been said about the word? In John 1, 1 to 3, that by the word, through the word, all things were created or came into existence. 
that by using this for God, the Father makes him a lesser God, a small God. Why is it that the new works are saying did not change God the Father into small God, G? Because the work by him, all things came into existence. It's used even in the New World Translation. Does that make the Father agent of creation and lesser God? Definitely no. The sinlessness. The fact is that the truth cannot be hidden. The Son of God is also God the Son. Again, the word beginning is characteristic for both God the Father and the Word. In John 1, 1, it says, in the beginning. What is the meaning? God will ask you, we will look at in the beginning very well. In fact, in the beginning was the Word. And the word was with God. And the word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. The sinlessness. Why would the Holy Spirit inspire John after he has written in the beginning was the word will continue to state that the word was with God. And he continued. The same was. The same was. Look at the way the whole thing was phrased. Do you know why? In those times, the Greeks, the Ephesians, the, the pagan world also had some philosophy about the, the idols they worship, that that was the God who made everything. And to them, they have different kinds of God. They have one great God, where they can call Hermes, they can call Jupiter, or whatever. Then they have others. Either they were brought forth from the knee of the great God, or something. And they are lesser. And all those believe were there. And so they worship all of them. And that's polytheism, many gods. And all of them, but one is greater, some are smaller in different degrees. And the Holy Spirit wanted to disabuse the minds of this. That no, our God is not like that. Yes, the Word was with God, but He was not a lesser God. The Word was with God, but He was not a created actor. He was God. So He said the same was in the beginning with God. And the Word was God. Hallelujah. The same. And so it beats the imagination of everybody that they will get confused more. That it is not the kind of worldly God that you think about. It's not the imagination of your theories of God that you think about. This same way that was with God was God. And so when you make him a letter God, you are just behaving like the Ephesians, those Corinthians, the pagan world. How they understood the God. But we have only one God. We don't have two God. The God, the word is the same essence as the Father. One God. God the Father, God the Son. Hallelujah. The stingless listener. Why would the Holy Spirit do that? This alone testifies that the beginning he's talking about is eternal, eternity belonging to God. Not just in the beginning, but beginning which should be defined as eternity. That kind of beginning that is ascribed to God the Father, the Word was also there, having that eternity with the Father. Today, we have shortly looked at John 1 1 and we shall continue. We are just building the argument that when you look into the scriptures, there are places that both God the Father and the Son are worshipped together. They are mentioned in one breath and are worshipped together. And it helps us to disabuse, to prevent anybody who wants to differentiate between the Father and the Son in terms of one higher God and a lesser God. It helps because in our embrace, whatever was done was done to both at the same time. And those are the passages we are using to help our brethren who may be confused or may be deceived to relook at these scriptures very well and try to come out with the truth because the truth has set us free. And that is why we are learning this series of lessons. Our purpose is that we all shall appear before this almighty God that would say just as Jesus Christ our Lord, and we shall be saved. We pray that every creature he created shall be saved. That is the prayer of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. That is our prayer too. And so with humility, we ask everyone to relook at his favorite passages that he has been using all the while, talking against the Jesus as a creature that is blasphemous. We look at it again. Today we looked at John 1, 1 adding to areas where both the Father and the Son are mentioned at one breath as God. And God will need to, well, uh, next week we shall continue. We will look at wonderful passages uh, meaning from this again and the Lord will give us understanding as we open our hearts. We invite you to come and worship the churches of Christ to study again with us and you will know a lot from the scripture the truths 
that will set you one free. And when he comes, we shall all rejoice. Once again, this has been the Oracles of God radio broadcast, a biblical program that is run and sponsored by the Churches of Christ, which come your way every Wednesday on Radio Universe 105.7 FM. Make a day with that same time God will the next week as God continues to unravel his priceless oracles. You are warmly invited to worship the churches of Christ all over the country, the pillar of truth, where an untreated word of God is said, and God is worshipped in spirit and in truth. You may want to contact us on 024-5527-658 or send us a message on coc.radio at yahoo.com. We are also located on Facebook at Church Radio. Church Radio, once again, I am your brother, Eric Dako. Now may God himself, the God of peace, sanctify us through and through. May our whole spirit, souls, and bodies become blameless at the appearance of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. So we meet again. Stay rich and blessed. Amen. And good morning. Good morning.